Welcome to the channel and welcome back to another video. On this video, I wanna talk about the seven different types of bad tenants that's out there. And I wanna to talk to you real briefly about how to deal with them. Now, I've had rental property for more than 20 years and I've probably had over 120 different tenants in my properties over those 20 plus years. So I've seen a lot of different types of tenants. So let's jump into it. The first type of tenant that you're gonna run into is the type of tenant that does not communicate, right? They act like everything is okay and nothing is wrong in the house or with them. And they just don't tell you anything as a landlord or property manager. They don't tell you what's going on whatsoever. Now this is the tenant that has lost a job or two. Um, the sink is leaking and it's been leaking for three or four months or maybe even they're moving in like one or two weeks or three or four days and you don't know it until three days before they actually move out of the property. So this tenant just doesn't communicate with you on any level. Now that can be dangerous on a lot of levels, right? If the toilet's been leaking uh, water out the bottom of it for the last six months and they never mention anything to you because they just don't communicate, that's a problem, right? So one of the ways I try to avoid that is I tell all of my tenants up front and I always remind them several months into the lease, hey, if something's going wrong, the first thing I want you to do, either with the house or with you, that may actually affect payment or the property itself, let me know as soon as possible. Hey, you don't want a plumbing issue going on for six months without you knowing it. Water can damage every single thing in its path. So you gotta be careful about that. I also try to ask them a lot of different questions on a regular basis, maybe every couple of months. I'm having conversations with them because I notice right away if they don't communicate with me. And so if that's the case, I try to do as much as I can to communicate with them. Now the second type of bad tenant is the flat out dishonest tenant, right? This is the tenant that will look you square in the eye, tell you something, and it's not true, and then they forget that they told you the lie that they told you previously. This tenant is always a problem because they're like a habitual, always lying for no reason. They're gonna tell you story after story, and they're gonna make up stuff to sound good. That tenant is a problem tenant, that's a bad tenant. So one of the things I do with that type of tenant is I take pretty much everything they say with a, with a grain of salt, right? I don't hold on or latch on too much to what they say. I try to look at what they do and how they behave because typically a tenant that's dishonest with you on a regular basis, you can't rely on what they're telling you. And so I'm doing a lot of extra communicating with that type of tenant as well. Now the third type of bad tenant is the tenant that is way too high maintenance, right? The tenant that calls the landlord to change a light bulb or calls the landlord when the door handle is a little bit loose. Now this type of tenant is a problem tenant because they're always going to be contacting you. This is the tenant that you'll get the call from at one, two, three in the morning. In other words, the tenant that when the, when the, the light switch is a little bit loose, the case over the light switch, they'll come and ask you to tighten it up when all they had to do was take a flathead screwdriver and tighten it or a Phillips screwdriver and tighten it. But this is the tenant that you have to focus in on the lease with. And so this is the tenant that you have something spelled out in your lease that says, the tenant is responsible for this, the landlord is responsible for that. And then you go over that with them. Now, if you have to, you might wanna revisit that two, three, four months into the actual lease. That way it's squared away who's responsible for what. Now, how you structure that on your lease is totally up to you. But I'm just telling you, this type of high maintenance tenant can be a bad tenant because they're going to bug you about every single little bitty small thing that they could actually fix themselves and it's possibly their responsibility according to the lease. I personally get on maintenance very, very quickly. If there's something going wrong in the next day or two, we're gonna be over there taking a look at it and checking it out and getting it worked on or fixed. But there's some people that abuse that and they call you way too much. That's the high maintenance tenant, right? So are they a horrible tenant? They're not horrible, but they do kind of fall into the classification of being sort of a bad tenant because they just can't take care of anything by themselves. Now the tenant that doesn't communicate, the tenant that's dishonest, and the tenant that's high maintenance, those all have to do with the business side of being a landlord, okay? They make it a little difficult to do business. Hey guys, if you're getting anything out of this video, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber, and also do me a favor, drop me a comment below. 
I'm giving you seven different types of bad tenants. Is there another type of bad tenant that I left off the list? All right, let's jump to number four. The fourth type of bad tenant is simply the tenant that leaves the outside exterior of the property trashed, right? The inside might be okay, but there's that McDonald's bag that's been in the front yard for about three weeks. There's garbage on the side of the property and there's trash thrown all over the backyard and things on the outside of the property are not properly taken care of. The lawn is not cut, the weeds are not taken care of, the bushes are not trimmed, whatever it may be. Now that type of tenant is a bad tenant for several reasons. The first reason is if the outside of the property looks that bad, there's a very good possibility that the inside of the property that you don't see as a landlord on a regular basis could be trash as well. But the second thing is the outside of the property is making the neighborhood look bad. And when the neighborhood looks bad, it brings down the quality of the actual property itself. It brings down the value of the overall property and neighborhood. How do you deal with that? For me, what I do on a regular basis is if I see that possibly going on with a tenant, I always make contact with that tenant early to remind them of their responsibilities to take care of the outside of the property. But I also do regular drive-bys of the property every few weeks, every month or two. Thankfully, I live near the properties that I own and manage. So it's easy for me just to drive by them real quick and see how the outside and exterior is looking. So if you get a tenant like that, you got to take it upon yourself to communicate with them on a regular basis and also take a look at the property on the outside regularly. Now that leads to the fifth type of bad tenant. And that is the tenant that trashes the inside of the property. Right, so you have some tenants that trash the outside, the inside looks okay, but the other type of tenant that usually causes more damage is the tenant that trashes the inside, but the outside, you can't tell how bad it is on the inside because the outside is okay. Now this type of tenant will cause major interior damage to your property. Now here's how you can possibly remedy that tenant that's ripping up and tearing up the inside. The walls are all crazy. The pets are using the restroom all over the carpets and it has a bad odor. Here's what you do. Up front with your tenants, let them know before you move them in the property that you're gonna be inspecting the property every two to three months. And you can do it more if you like or a little bit less if you like, but I like to say two or three months. I let the tenants know that up front. And then in the lease, I have certain clauses for upkeep of the property. And so what I do is I go over that piece of the lease very clearly with the tenant ahead of time. And then what do I do two months in? I follow up on what I said. So I'm being accountable for what I told the tenant I would do. And I'm holding the tenant accountable for the inspections that I'm going to do, the walkthrough inspections. Now, I don't surprise a tenant because there's certain laws from state to state that regulate how and when and so forth that a landlord can go into the property and inspect it. So you got to make sure you know your landlord tenant laws. That's really important. But I always give them at least 48 hours and say, hey, I'm going to be doing an inspection of the property, a walkthrough that we regularly do that was in the lease and we talked about. I'm going to be doing that um, Tuesday and it might be, you know, Friday or Saturday. I'm going to do that Tuesday. That way, if the tenant is tearing things up and ripping stuff up, I can see it when I go in there. And when I go in there to do that inspection, I do the walkthrough inspection thoroughly. I'm looking in bathrooms. I'm looking at now. It, now, some of you may say, hey, that's a violation of the tenant's privacy. Not necessarily. If it's in the lease and it's within the rights of the landlord to do in terms of your state, then you can do that. Now, typically, if I do that two or three times and, the, and I can tell right away when I get into the house that the house is being taken care of on the inside, there's no need for me to keep doing that. But if I get in there and I see that I need to be doing that on a regular basis, I will keep doing it just to make sure the interior of the property is maintained. If you're not a landlord, you would be surprised at how messed up the interior of a property can get from just one tenant who doesn't take care of the inside of the property. So you can call it infringing on the tenant's rights, but I've had enough bad tenants to know that the more I inspect that property on a regular basis and keep it halfway decent on the inside, the less money it's going to cost me to make repairs down the road. Now, the sixth tenant is simply the tenant that's always late paying their rent, no matter what. They're 10 days late, they're five days late, they're 15 days late. Because what I've noticed is this, guys, once a tenant gets behind on their rent, 
it's pretty difficult for a lot of people to catch up. So a tenant that's chronically, habitually, always late on their rent, that's a bad tenant. Now, how do you fix that? Well, here's what you do. Number one, you always make sure that you stay true to the exact words and letters in your lease. If your lease says you have a late fee, if the rent is not paid after the fifth of the month, then you need to make sure that you enforce that, especially early on in the relationship between you and the tenant. Enforce whatever you have in your lease and work your lease to the T. Whatever you say that you're gonna do, make sure you do it. How are you collecting late rent? What are you charging for late fees? And what are your eviction policies? You need to follow that stuff to the T, to the letter. If the tenant is 10 days late and in your lease you say it's a $200 charge for rents that are paid 10 days late, then you need to be charging $200 exactly. And if you have to, there's ways to get a tenant to catch up and allow them to catch up if they get behind. But the late rent tenant is a bad tenant and you've got to take certain measures to make sure that that doesn't happen. Number seven, the obvious elephant in the room. The seventh bad tenant is simply the tenant that doesn't pay rent at all, has no worry about paying the rent, doesn't care about paying the rent, knows the system probably better than you do as a landlord, has had evictions before, or may have had issues paying their rent previously at other places before they even got to your place, but they simply refuse to pay the rent. And sometimes you'll get a tenant like this, guys, that just will squat there and just expect you as a landlord not to do anything about it because they know their rights. They know they got 60 days or 30 days or 90 days, whatever it is in your state. This is a bad tenant. Now, how do you go about handling a tenant like that? Simply get them out of the property as soon as possible. Now, I've even had a tenant before where I said, hey, I'll give you $150 if you leave tomorrow or if you leave in two days. Guess what? I freed up several properties that way because the longer they're there not paying the rent, the more money they cost you. And sometimes people will jump at the bit just to get an extra $150, $200 in their pocket. They'll leave. But the point is this. That's a bad tenant. That's probably the worst tenant, right? The one that does not pay rent, refuses to leave, and you have to actually go through the eviction process. What you should do in that case is evict them immediately. Go through the process immediately of removing them from the premises. If it's 30 days in your area, that's cool. If it's 90 days, whatever it takes, get them out of there as quick as possible. And then you can make a decision whether or not you wanna pursue back rent that they owe. So listen guys, those are my seven bad tenants and those are the things that you can do to work with them and maybe cut down on some of the risks that you have as a landlord again if you got anything at all out of the video smash the like button and drop me a comment what did i miss what are some other types of bad tenants that maybe you've ran into as a landlord or maybe you was one of those bad tenants who knows drop that comment below guys smash the like button subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber listen the best person to take care of the old you is the young you do me a favor, take care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.